On today's video, I'm going to be installing my LSA blower and we'll be putting on the forced induction interchillers thermal blanket onto the bottom of the blower and then also installing the uh, head to blower spacers and then also the lid spacer between the blower and the lid. So please to kick off this video, if you would, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and please leave comments as to what you think. This is how the thermal blanket comes. So first thing we gotta do is get unwrapped and take a look as to what we can all cover on the blower with it. Again, I've covered this thermal wrap in a previous video, and it is a sticky back, so you actually peel this shiny coating off of it, and then it sticks to the bottom of the blower. The purpose of it is to block the radiant heat coming up from the engine itself and past the valley cover, which radiates up and right into the bottom of the blower. So first thing to do is to lay this out, see how it's gonna lay onto the blower, and then we'll have to start sticking it down and cutting it to trim, because it's gonna have to fit inside of all of the ports. So it's gonna have to be cut to fit inside of here. So on the thermal blanket, the first thing that I did was I cut a flap back here in the back and I'm going to peel that off and that'll go on the back of the rotors. So I'm gonna peel that off, stick that, and then stick the rest of this and then trim it to fit. All right, so as you can see, I've been peeling off the backing. And as I go along, just pushing it down into the grooves a little bit of the blower and it's sticking down good. So now I'm just gonna work it off to the front of the snout and then start trimming all this up. All right, now the thermal blanket is all on and trimmed up. Just remember to keep it back so the flat part of your ceiling surface is showing. What I found easiest to trim it with was a pair of scissors. And then also after it's all stuck down and installed, make sure that you wipe down this uh, gasket ceiling surface because it'll get a bunch of sticky stuff on it. So take some brake and parts cleaner and a rag and clean it all off real good before you put on your new gaskets. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install these thermal plates, which are spacers between the blower and the head. That's how they sit down there. Uh, there's a whole video on the channel about these. They have a one piece O-ring seal on every single port. I wipe down all the ports real good with brake and parts cleaner. So the little holes here that are cut out are for your bolts. So they sit right there. It's got a channel for your dowel off the bottom of your blower. And they actually set in place pretty nicely. Right. Sorry, right like that. So they sit in place there pretty good. Again, the port matching is pretty good on them. So now the blower will get set straight down onto it. All right, so now the blower is on. I've just got to finish torquing it down. wanted to see if I could show you what it looks like. So the spacer is going to come pretty much up to those little, see that little nub right there. There's a little nub kind of at the very top of the head. There's one there and there's one up here in the front. So it's going to come up against those and then you've got your gasket that is on the bottom of the blower. So the bottom of the blower gasket is the factory one. It's just a brand new one. 
And then you have the forced induction inner chiller spacer, which is a 10 millimeter spacer. And then it's one piece O-ring seating up to each port. So now I'm going to torque down the blower and get that done. Let me see if I can show you on the driver's side. The driver's side has the uh, fuel injector harness still kind of with it. So it's a little bit tough to see there. Let's see if we can take a look in here. There you can see some of the thermal blanket. You can see the spacer right here. Move my light. There's the spacer there. So it's 10 millimeter there. And then on the lid, it's gonna be a 20 millimeter spacer. So something interesting to see is what is this gonna all do to our strut tower bar? It'll be fine if I can't run it, but I know a lot of people are kind of wondering and curious if it'll fit, how that works out. So one more time on the hood, I have a Weapon X carbon fiber hood. It has a pretty big cowl to it. A little bit hard to see, excuse the dirt and everything. The car's a little dusty. So I've got enough hood room to clear it for sure. And we are gonna see though, how it works with the strut tower bar. So the next part of the install on the forced induction inner chillers lid spacer is you're gonna press this rubber O-ring down into the groove. Then you're gonna put your regular standard gasket into this spacer. That spacer is just gonna sit right into that channel. And then you're gonna take the outer spacer, which has an O-ring, and it's gonna go down just like this. All right, and then now you're ready to set on the stock lid and put in the bolts. All right, so now the lid is installed, the upper spacer is installed, and here you can see how nice and big that 20 millimeter lid spacer is. It really spaces it up. The light makes it look a little bit, I guess bluish a little bit, but without it. And looking back here, it's not, not really blue. It is pretty black. So you definitely need room to fit this thing in here. I'm gonna see if I can show you some views. Look how high, like I'm down a little bit above parallel with that hood latch. And you can see how high that uh, lid is setting on the blower. It's setting really high. At first, when I was looking at it, after I installed it, I was thinking, man, is that big carbon fiber cowl hood even gonna clear it? And it does, it closes just fine. Take a look at it from the side so you don't get another idea. So you can see the front end of that ZL1 lid definitely sits up for sure. So it clears the hood, but now here's the bad news. We're gonna set the strut tower brace on it. Lots of people been asking. Okay, so as you can see, basically already hitting the ZL1 lid right here. And you can see it's setting on that stud, but there is a gap. I'm trying to show you if it'll clear. See, there's a gap in there. So it's not even down on the nut of that stud yet. And then when this bolt is out, it's basically sitting about that high off of the chassis of the car. So it does not fit, not with factory hardware. It would have to be spaced, I'm guessing, at least a quarter of an inch to get it up from where it sits down. Um, if you wanted to use that stud, 
maybe space it up with some washers or something like that. I guess if you have the hood clearance, you could get the hardware to where it will fit. But as you can see, it's, I mean, it's up against it. And we got room over here. See, it's not even, like I can make it sit on this side, but then once I make it sit on this side, it's up over on that side. So just depends on how it's sitting. It's not resting against either bolt on the outside. And remember before it was sitting down smooth. So what I did for now, that black washer was a washer up on top over here with a nut. So I just took the black washer and actually needed it for the extra room over here on, on the other side too and tightened them down. So that's what I did so far. So for now, I'm gonna run without it, but that's not to say that I might not try and see if I can actually get it to where I find some hardware and the right spacers and see if I can clear it up underneath my hood. I think it'll clear this hood. So this again is the uh, Weapon X power hood. with a pretty big hood scoop. Excuse the dirt, I'm just now getting this thing back to running, but it's a it's a pretty big hood scoop. You can see it in all of the, all of the other um, videos that I've got. It's, it's a pretty big cowl, several inches. Plenty to clear a 20 millimeter lid spacer and plenty to clear a 10 millimeter lower spacer between the blower and the head. So I'll give y'all the specs and the bolt pattern for the lid. So the torque for the bolts is the same as the blower, which is 44 inch pounds the first pass and 89 inch pounds the second pass. So y'all can do it how, how you like to, if that's how you want to do it. Basically, when I was working it down with that thick black o-ring and the new gasket it kind of you know needed to collapse down a little bit so i like to just take my time and just work my way around it i'll make three passes in the bolt pattern that they tell you to go so i'll put up that bolt pattern graphic here and so if you just follow that and take your time torquing it down, you'll get it. So I appreciate y'all watching this video. I know forced induction air chillers already has kind of an install video, but I thought I'd try to go a little bit more in depth with things like the torque specs and etc. So uh, one last detail, this is a milled ZL1 lid. I'm not sure if exactly how much they milled from off of the top. I guess if it was milled down flush, it would help me fit the strut brace bar, the strut tower brace bar, but anyways. So we'll see, maybe in the future I'll get it on, but I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please, if you haven't already, consider hitting the like button on it and subscribing if you haven't already, and leave me some comments. Let me know what y'all think.